What the hell are you doing? Parking in my spot. What? I said, what do you think you're doing parking in my spot? We don't have a sign parking. I get here first, I park where I want to. I park in that place every day, and you know it. You think because I get here a couple minutes late, you can take my place? It's not your place. First come, first serve. You want that spot, get here first. <laughs> oh, that's where you want it, huh? You want to see who can get to work earlier. That's pretty lame. Bob, what's going on? He took my parking place. Go ahead and take off, Jack. Bob, parking places in the employee lot are not a sign. I know you usually get here early to get that spot, but anybody can park there if they're here first. Well, that's news to me. The driver we just saw has been with his current employer for several years. He has a spotless driving record and usually gets along well with his co-workers. That's why his supervisor took special notice when he observed Bob arguing with another driver. As a supervisor, you have a key role in identifying a driver with an alcohol or substance abuse problem because it is what you observe personally that triggers a reasonable suspicion test. Here's what the regulation says. The employer's determination that reasonable suspicion exists must be based on specific, contemporaneous, articulable observations concerning the appearance, behavior, speech, or body odors of the driver. Let's break this down. Reasonable suspicion must be based on behaviors or attributes you can see, hear, or smell. These behaviors must be happening as you observe them. You can't send a driver in for a reasonable suspicion test based on what someone else has observed and reported to you, or based on a gut feeling you have about a driver. You have to observe the behavior personally, and you have to be able to describe that behavior to others if necessary. Alcohol and drug professionals have studied the behaviors that may indicate an individual is abusing alcohol or using controlled substances, such as marijuana, cocaine, opiates, amphetamines, or phencyclidine. Reasonable suspicion is a question that comes up frequently with supervisors. I, I feel that the, the key point about it is to, to really know the people that you're supervising and to know them on a personal level, because what you're really looking for is a deviation from what is normal for that person. And so being able to interact with them on a daily basis and kind of know you know, about their interests and their children and uh, what's going on in their life so that when changes do occur, you're able to kind of compare it to something. Some of the things that would clue me in a suspicious behavior would be definitely a strong sense of, I mean, the smell of alcohol, um, glassy eyes, um, red bloodshot eyes maybe, looking very, very worn out, tired. Um, definitely a change of behavior would definitely be you know, where he is acting a certain way and never acted that way before, that would definitely be a sign. Say a person comes in and they are very short-tempered. Uh, being um, aggressive, when that's not the employee's usual behavior, but a cluster of behaviors that are observable. Excessive thirst, glassy-eyed, essence, the smell of leftover alcohol, the smell of leftover marijuana, a change in behavior that is not typical of this employee. Uh, as a supervisor, you should be aware of changes in appearance, uh, changes in uh, maybe a driver's behavior, uh, obvious things as maybe um, an odor, um, those should be some, some, some examples or, 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 or tips that would ask, you, ask, some, ask some questions if, if maybe a driver is, is under the influence of something. There's quite a few different um, observations that we train our supervisors on and each of our supervisors are given a card so that they can refer to that at a moment's notice. As a supervisor, you must observe your drivers with these behaviors and attributes in mind. Telling a driver that he or she must report for a reasonable suspicion alcohol or drug test is not easy. Perhaps it's one of the most difficult things you'll ever have to do as a supervisor. But it is important to confront the driver for the safety of the driving public, the reputation and future of your business, 
and for the health and safety of the driver. Professionals in the field of substance abuse counseling have developed some effective techniques for approaching the subject of alcohol and drug abuse. When it's 